there's some really tragic news to kind of put out there. Something I've not seen being pushed out on the timeline, maybe because people are afraid of talking about it because it might lead to the overall closure of the club. But I think this is probably on the cards now, considering how many occurrences of this that they've had over the years and close shaves. This is Coach of Daily Mail. It says police probe death at fabric nightclub here in London after a man in his foes collapsed at notorious London club um, in the early mornings. So a man in his 30s sadly died after being collapsing at notorious London club fabric. Police were called um, to the medical emergency shortly after 2 a.m. on a Sunday. Despite efforts to resuscitate the man, he tragically died. Um, so which is awful to see that right and um, it continues here it says officers attended the man is first in medical treatment upon arrival despite our best efforts to suscitate him he was pronounced dead at 2 11 um, the death is being treated as unexpected at this early stage inquiries are ongoing the coroner has been informed and officers in the process of tracing his next of kin one club has said the club suddenly closed and everyone was escorted out later the door staff said someone had died and nobody was allowed near the club we were all called at 1 22 a.m on sunday the 25th of june to report to a person on war at club duh, 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 duh. we sent a number of resources there unfortunately despite best efforts a person was pronounced dead at the club and it also ends here the popular night club was forced to close back in September 2016 in the wake of two drug related deaths there two deaths in 2016 in there it's also revoked after council found it to be a culture of drug use however the Farringdon club was allowed to reopen in 2017 after parties agreed to a new licensing condition including raised entry age and tougher security measures um, conditions included um, anyone under 19 was entering the venue was continued there at 8 p.m. on Monday. The club also pledged to introduce a new ID scan system issued on entry and to improve search procedures, which is also something they've done over the years. And it's quite tragic because obviously they've tried everything in their power to reinvent fabric over the years. It's just never going to be a safe place in general. I think most clubs can't promise that anyway, but fabric more so than most because of the crowd it attracts, because of the um, vibe it basically cultivates on the inside, because of the flipping horrible precedent it sets itself on the beginning of the club. It's probably one of the most horrible experiences in terms of going in the nightclub I've ever experienced, especially for just a normal punter. The amount of security checks you go through, they're very intrusive, um, they're very off-putting, even just where you have to place your flipping jacket, you have to go up some stairs. It feels like you're getting flipping booked into a prison or something, how you have to put your jacket in and go up another stairs and go down and then this whatever it's just a horrible experience once you get on the actual dance floor themselves you get into actual rooms they're absolutely splendid probably two of the best rooms you're ever gonna see ever gonna hear in the uk once it comes to nightclubs and stuff absolutely incredible but anything outside of that is absolutely horrible really 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 horrible um and it's really strange because there are people on the dance floor security guards with flashlights that shine lights on you if they feel you're acting a bit dodgy and shit to dissuade people from doing drugs but i've still seen people taking massive lines massive key bumps doing fucking balloons on the flipping fabric dance floor, which is insane because you're wondering how the fuck did they get the fucking helium inside the club considering how extensive the searches are they empty all your pockets they put stuff in pots they fucking inspect the stuff that's in pots they search all your inside they search around your fucking you know your trousers um they do on your inside of your leg your socks sometimes you'll have to take your shoe off it's crazy how much to do it before in the past they used to have fucking sniffer dogs in that nightclub which i'm sure permanently damaged this view with some people regardless and it kind of makes me think back to that youtube channel that i've been watching quite often now called das techno team these two guys from berlin who really pontificate and it's if anything maybe take themselves a bit too seriously when it comes to club culture but now i kind of understand why because there are some places that they take themselves seriously because there is a serious approach to club culture it's a serious approach to harm reduction and there's a serious approach to making sure people are safe in clubs regardless and that's why when they don't recognize it in some places they raise the alarm so that things can be you know so people are aware and things can change because the consequences can be completely lethal and it is quite interesting to see that the clubs in london that don't have any kind of door selection policy type thing which is usually something that annoys a lot of people who don't get into these clubs in berlin are also the clubs that tend to have the most issues right i think of places like egg i think of places like fabric where essentially if you have money you can go in 
they usually have the most issues. There are places where you're going to see the most fights, the most whatever. And I've even been in fabric myself, maybe as of the last six months and seen somebody collapse, um, on the dance floor from, you know, maybe taking too much care or whatever they were taking. Ambulance came in. They didn't end the night. They treated him on the dance floor. He woke up. They took him outside and stuff. But I've seen that. Like that's a regular occurrence that happens there. I'm sure security probably will probably tell you that, but then they have this extensive searching and stuff, but that still happens. So clearly there's a culture around that club that just permeates through and bleeds into the patrons who kind of copy what goes on there because i feel like a lot of those behaviors i saw some people learn based on the vibe the club kind of em emits and puts out there so it's unfortunate for this young gentleman in his 30s that he had to be a victim of such a thing because you would imagine go to a nightclub you know it's an amazing experience you go there to enjoy yourself you go to have a great time the last thing you're gonna think is gonna happen is that you might pass away there from maybe doing too much or taking dodgy stuff or whatever it may be who knows what the circumstances are around it but it does really leave a horrible stain on a club like fabric and obviously just paint a horrible light on how we treat nightlife in london and the uk overall there has to be a lot of kind of self-reflection on this sort of stuff about how us as brits just don't know how to maybe rave responsibly there is maybe something to be said for that maybe fabric aren't to blame at all maybe it's the patrons that go into the club just don't know how to behave don't know how to act and always do the most which inevitably leads to people you know succumbing to things like collapsing and whatnot in flipping clubs because they've taken too much which is obviously completely tragic but this feels like this might be the beginning of the end and again they have no one else to blame but themselves because i felt like over the years uh, no matter how much paint they've tried to place on that club new sounds new whatever I don't feel like there's been a real onus on cultivating community, on trying to rewrite, restart the club from a new, it's just been putting plasters on an open wound. And this essentially is what you get when you don't take stuff like that seriously, which is why we have to thank the clubs that do take those type of things seriously that maybe do have promoters in place who you know stipulate that only a certain type of person can come into their spaces and whatnot um because this is what leads at least to a somewhat safer raving experience which i don't think is the case but i think that does add to it in some regards it does kind of dissuade some people from doing some madnesses because they know um, the people behind it are definitely on job and know what they're flipping doing but man my thoughts and feelings go out to the kid or the guy that passed away 30 years old there's no age to die especially in the flipping nightclub i can't imagine what his family and friends are going through um it's probably completely tragic again you leave your you know you, you get notified your person's going out for a night out to party the last thing you think is going to happen is they're going to arrive back in a body bag or something like absolutely horrible so rip to the person who passed away and also to the people who had to witness that it would in first hand you know imagine what a vibe killer that is you're just rolling you're just coming up you're just coming down and you see someone collapse and you know as humans i think we can usually intrinsically tell when somebody has passed we can just see it in a lifeless body we can just get a sense of something has happened here where they pass up into the other realm and this is what happened to this person so r.i.p to them um hopefully we get to a resolution with this i'd love to see some sort of conflict resolution this also to meet in between from the council and the club but i feel like with the amount of strikes fabric have had over the years it just feels like this might be the final nail on the coffin for them where they might eventually have to close for good because you just can't have people you know regularly dying um at your club um all the time and just point it down to people getting too crazy and doing dodgy drugs because clearly they are attracting these type of people in their club in the first place that's the major part of contention that i would have if i was a local council person like why is it that fabric seems to be the only person place that attracts place people who tend to go too hard too crazy and do too much and then end up having to pass away at a flipping nightclub it just doesn't make any sense but like i said plenty of times myself as many times if i tried to give the club a chance it is a bit of a dump um the sound system's great they got great great get book they great they get great bookings and stuff but there's people that go in it just make it a horrible place to go and hang out which is really i think a bit of a slight on the club because like i said great location great history great lineup but the scene the people that hang out there 
it just doesn't make it seem worthwhile to put yourself through all that nonsense the security the checks everything just ruins your night to the point where you're thinking you know what i'd much rather be at home or i'd much rather watching a fucking set on boiler room or something so i can't blame people for feeling like that at all but rip to the victims um hopefully the family are getting the support they need and we'll see how this plays out with fabric but this is not a good sign for them going forward this is not a good sign for them going forward